What's going on? What is good? What's up? I'm waiting for y'all to pop in and pop up because I'm live. Because I'm live. And I'm hollering at y'all on this muggy Tuesday afternoon. So I'm waiting for y'all to trickle on in as we rap, as we talk, as we get it in. So I'm just waiting for y'all to just pop on in, pop on up, you know, because that's what I do. <laughs> Hopefully y'all had a great morning. Uh, shout out to Tony Ali, who uh, put up her broadcast today. Uh, it was very, very, very and extremely um, inspirational because um, I know her story and I know how far she's come and, um, and and we're just beginning. I mean, we're just getting started. And so I just want to commend her for, you know, following and being obedient uh, to what God told her to do. And putting herself in a position to be blessed. Because a lot of times we'll have talent, right? We'll have talent. But we don't put ourselves in a position to grow. We don't put ourselves in a position to flourish. So it's, it's kind of like a singer who, you know, probably could out sing, say, Mariah Carey. But they live in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Okay, and they refuse to leave and get away from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. So their talents will never be discovered, you know, discovered because they still live in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Okay, so with that being said, shout out to Tony Ali because you know we had we had this we had this conversation, and, and out of all the places, because she had told me basically, you know. And let me let me backtrack a little bit. We're on a private jet. We're on a private jet coming back from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. If you know me, you know I like private jets. I like to fly in private jets. Some I've always wanted to do, so that's what I do now. Now I could I couldn't do that years ago, but I can do that now. Now you know, and on that private jet. You know, she was, you know, she was kind of looking around and she was kind of like, you know what? I've come a long way from being, you know, a, a person who worked uh, at McDonald's, uh, worked at Kentucky Fried Chicken. She worked at three or four fast food restaurants all at the same time. And then when she's looking around, she's like, but now I'm in a, a private jet. <laughs> now, let's fast forward a few weeks uh, further down the line. Uh, she ends up getting a, a brand new Audi. And, and again, keep in mind, this person was living in Columbus, Georgia. And by a leap of faith, decided to come to Atlanta, Georgia. And now she's flourishing because now her talent is being rewarded in, in a way that she can be seen. And, and, and so basically she's getting blessed because she's on fertile ground versus being where she's at. I'm sorry, versus being what she was. Again, great talent, but uh, it's kind of like when I was in Clemson, South Carolina when I first started this thing, and I was sitting in the living room, and God basically told me, uh, the talents that I've given you, that, that I bless you with, you know, is bigger than the area you serve. Make sure everybody gets it. And that's what you have to do whenever you've discovered your talent. You got to move and, and position yourself to be blessed versus just thinking people are going to seek you out. It don't work that way. So you got to put yourself in a position to be seen in a position uh, in, in a position to be blessed, which leads me to today's discussion. How to get what you want. Again, you have to put yourself in a position to be seen. A lot of people that are on this post right now is pro are probably the finest people in this city. Finest, sexiest people probably on the planet. But you don't go nowhere. 
Again, you go to one of a few places. You you go to church. You go to your job. You go to your kid's school. You go to the grocery store. And then you go back home. You can't be seen that way. Because all you do is go to a handful of places. And keep in mind, when you, when you go to these places, you're not at your best. Now, church you are. But at the end of the day, you ain't trying to kick it at church. You know, even as bad as I used to be, shoot, I wouldn't flirt at church. So what does that tell you? <laughs> so what does that tell you? Again, putting yourself in a position to be seen. Now, I'm going to teach you a few things on how to get what you want. Now, I'm coming from, um, I, I like to read. If you know me, I like to read. I like to study people because I like to know certain things. I like to know. I like to go deeper. I, I like to study you know, behavior, and I like to discover, you know, what, what separates the successful from the, the not so successful. So one of the books that I picked up, it was called Person of Interest, and uh, it just basically talked about successful people. And, and the other book that I'm going to talk about, and, and I'm going to title this together in a nice little bow, um, is a book by uh, Robert Cialdini, and it was basically, you know, the 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 influences and he talks about what influences, you know, persuasion. And he also has a book called Presuasion. Basically it talks about how to set up the framework to get what you want. Presuasion is an awesome book. Uh, but let, let's go, let, let me start with the person of interest. Okay. One of the things that it talks about that's so, 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 so important is basically the book is, it, the book is basically loosely, in a sense, tied into something Jim Rohn said. Jim Rohn once said, uh, to attract attractive people, we have to first make ourselves attractive. To attract attractive people, you first have to make yourself attractive. You, you have to get your body right. You have to get your attitude right. You have to get your spirit right. But he also goes down the list and says certain things uh, that he basically talks about attributes of a successful person. Things that he noticed. Number one, energy. You know, successful, attractive people, they have energy. They're, they're not gloom and doom. You know, they have a good outlook on life. It ain't, you know, it's it's not, everything is not tragic. Everything is not a social media story, tragedy to them. Everything is, you know, this is what I got going on. See, I don't know, you know, for a lot of y'all, well, I'll speak on my behalf. Anytime I go somewhere, like say if I go home and I'm dealing with a lot of people uh, who ain't never left. And, and, and say, you know, I run into a childhood friend who never left. And, and I'm like, hey, man, what's going on? He looks down. He says, that energy low. I got a lot of great things going on. My energy is up. He ain't got nothing going on. His energy is low. It, it's almost depressing. Because we, you know, e even when I'm kicking it with my people, we can't go past how you doing because my energy is up and there's this down. Now, as a dude, it's, it's amazing and attractive when you find a woman who's energetic. Because after you get past 30, a lot of women after 30 are tired all the time. Something wrong with them all the time. My back hurt. My knees hurt. I'm tired. You know, they walk into the house. We, hey, where you going? Oh, I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I'm doing this. I'm going to lay up in the bed, y'all. That's how, that's how it is. You know, because, you know, as an inside, as an inside man thing that we always would say amongst ourselves, hey, man. And, all, and the old people would always say this. The old people would be like, you know, the ones that was like in their 60s. They be like, make sure once you get a certain age, you get you somebody 10, 15 years younger. Where then we be like, why? Why? Why you say that? Cause you want somebody that's vibrant. You know, women that's gonna be your age at a certain point, they gonna get tired, not want to do nothing. 
you know, can't do nothing because they tired. Life didn't warm out, you know, where they work didn't warm out. You know, the pressures of life have worn them out and they ain't got no energy. You need to get yourself somebody 10, 15 years younger than you that can run around with you. Right. <laughs> so really, and that's the important thing about being in shape. And this is why you're at an advantage. Because if you're in shape, guess what? You got energy. You feel like going somewhere. You know, when you go to a party, an event, or somebody's wedding, you feel like dancing. You feel like doing a whole bunch of stuff. You feel, you know, you feel like zip lining. You feel like doing something adventurous versus the, the ones who are not in shape who are tired. Now, let's go down the list. He also talks about uh, not knowledgeable. So, it's kind of like we can have a conversation you know, we can have a conversation. And let me give you a helpful hint. See, when I was single, one of the things that I used to do whenever I would talk to a potential lady that I was trying to hang out with, uh, mess with, <laughs> one of the things that I always did, and this is going to be very, very important for you getting what you want. When you listen to somebody, you have to gather Data. You have to gather data. That's important. So you're listening. You're actively listening versus hearing something and then wanting to come back with something just as clever. That's going to be important because one of the things, two things I would do, I would gather data because I knew that A, Y'all would be impressed that I could regurgitate everything that you were saying like I was listening, but it also made me seem sincere, like I really cared. So I could come back and tell you what basically you had said, you know, and then the other part and the other piece of it is, you know, when you listen, also do it in a way to where and this and this is then this is gonna be real real slick. Do it in a way that basically that person compliments themselves, and I'll show you how. It's kind of like this: say you sit with somebody, and then you say to that person, "Hey, so I guess you work a lot." Person says, "Yeah, I've worked about 60, 70 hours this week trying to get this thing together." You, this is you. Then you say something to the effect of, well, you know, it takes a strong man to be able to log all of those hours without complaining. Boom. You done boosted me up. You done boosted me up because you listen to me. Now, keep in mind the same things that I used to do, used to, do to women. When it's done to us, it still works. <laughs> so basically, she shot back at me. Um, how many hours I work then made me feel good about myself because I worked all of those hours because you made me feel a certain way. You complimented me, but you also made me feel good about myself to where actually I ended up complimenting myself by basically saying within myself, dang, that is pretty strong, huh? Then it turns the feeling to like, dang, I like her. Shoot, she, rec she recognizes greatness. She recognizes, you know, that I'm a hard worker. Shoot, I may have to holler at her. That's how it works, dude, people. That's how it works. Okay, so getting back to the, the, the next part of, of, of getting what you want. Appearance and attitude. If you look a certain way, and I'm just going to tell you this as a man. When you look a certain way... You can do whatever you want to. I'm talking about in terms of the endless opportunities that come your way. I have a friend of mine who's an actress. She can't act the lick, but whenever she steps into a room, it's a wrap. Just go ahead and shut it all down. It's a wrap because she, when she steps into the room, her body is Kenyified. It's a wrap. She can't act. <laughs> But because she looks a certain way, she keeps getting parts. She called me yesterday and she was like, oh, I done got a, you know, a, a part 
to a, a major movie with such and such. Oh, that's awesome. And then I'm like, but you can't act. But then she was like, yeah, but I look good. See, she knows she look good. And when you look good, there's certain advantages that are afforded to you and opportunities that are afforded to you because guess what? You look good. Your attitude is good. You know, uh, you're likable. I always remember, even with sales, people buy from two types of people. People that they like and people that they feel like they know and can trust. So likability goes a long way. And then also, the other piece of it, the packaging. The packaging. It's kind of like the discussion I was, I was having with Tony Ali uh, the other day. Tony, and Tony will tell you. Uh, Tony has lost 40, 50 pounds. Tony looks awesome. Tony, I keep using you as a point of reference. Tony lost 40, 50 pounds. Looks awesome. You know, uh, awesome at what she does in event planning. Dresses beautifully. Uh, you know, has a nice swagger about herself. Okay. So it, it just bought a new ride. She lives uh, downtown where you can see everything has an awesome view. See, she got all that packaging together and she has a great attitude. You know, she's giving. So, you know, when you go down the checklist of energy, outlook, appearance, attitude, packaging, boom, she got it. Now she just got to stop standing in that house. <laughs> And start, you know, being seen to where somebody can appreciate it. You see what I'm saying? So packaging is is very, very important. And what I mean by that, again, is putting it all together. Making yourself look attractive. Making people want to know you and get to know you. Have you ever just seen somebody walk into the room and somebody say, Hey, who is that? And then that person will go up and, and, and go up and talk to that person because they're so intrigued to know who and what that person does. That's how you want to be. Also, understand, and this is important too, understand that you are a salesperson. First and foremost, you are a salesperson. You're selling your goods. And so you have to act like a salesperson, knowing that you are a salesperson. See, a lot of people who don't act like salespeople never get their stuff bought. <laughs> they never get bought. They never get asked out because they, in their minds, they're, you know, just existing. Versus the person who, who walks around as if they're a salesperson and understands how to sell, how to sell their image of what they basically conjured up. You know, those people, they don't go dateless. They don't never complain about, there's just not enough quality men out there. They're getting asked out by the best of the best. They're getting married to the best of the best. And they, and they husband, they cheat on them. See? So, first, first thing you, again, you have to act like a salesman. And what do salesmen do? Any great salesman has to provide an explanation of services. Everybody who's an awesome salesman, I, I got five of mine. Um, you have to provide an explanation of services. In other words, why should I date you? Why should I commit to you? If I was selling cars, why should I buy that car if I sold handbags? Why should I by this bag. You see what I'm saying? So then, as a salesman, what you do is you basically show why they should choose you. Invest time in you. This is what makes me different. Then you put on an exhibition. <laughs> you know, you, you basically show you know, this is what makes me different. You know, I, you know, I'm supportive. I'm not going to nag you. Uh, yes, you know, I can help you with this. I, I, you know, I do understand this. 
And I do understand that as a man that, you know, you need X, Y, and Z. See, whenever you can find a woman who understands what you need and, and, and what happens is you have to find a, 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 a giving dude. You see what I'm saying? To where reciprocity happens. See, when you're giving, reciprocity happens. So if you find a dude, you know, basically, you come at that person like, you know, I understand this and I'm cool with this and I want to work with you to maybe do this, that, and the other and what can I do for you? Uh, when you approach somebody with the attitude of what can I do for you, then we as men who are unselfish will basically be like, you know what? Because you're so concerned with me, and because you want to do for me, in return, I'm going to do for you. Because I, I'm, just, I'm just thankful that you thought of me. You know, that you understand me and, you know, you're not really, you know, hopping on the nerves. And you're trying to help us as a, as a team. And I see that. And that's, a, and that's the other awesome part, too. And I'm going to tell you why we choose and why we don't choose. It, it, then I'm going to leave you alone. We choose women because we understand that at, that basically there's a scarcity going on in terms of you don't have a lot of great women. You know, you have a lot of women in terms of quantity, but you don't have a lot in terms of quality. So when you can identify the quality, boom, you locking that thing down. And see, that's the thing. So when you present yourself in a way of I'm giving, you know, I want what's best for us, we pick up on that. And then we basically say, you know what, because we were brought up in sports, we, we're like, basically, you know what, she makes for a good teammate. So guess what? It's going to be me and you, and we're going to be a team, and we're going to be a squad, and we're going to do great things together because I recognize that you would make for a great teammate. Keep in mind, we play, we as dudes have played sports all of our lives, so we understand the dynamics and the importance of teamwork. So if you're not resisting and you always nagging, get on my nerves, boom, I don't have to drag you and carry you around like, like a bad teammate, but because I recognize that, you know, you're on my team. You made for an awesome teammate, shoot. I'm drafting you. First round, baby. First round. So whenever you can show what makes you different, going back to the explanations, you know, explanation of services, and you can make yourself look like a zebra in terms of looking so different than any other woman out there, boom, we locking you down. Because we understand that there is a scarcity of great women. So when we do recognize that there is greatness there and you would make for an awesome teammate and we can build us a, a squad, you know, a family, we good. Especially if you encounter a person that's a business person, you know, who already out there trying to do awesome stuff. Shoot, whenever we can find somebody that adds to us, you know, because there's a difference between, um, yeah, there's a difference between being an attribute in a person that's just a liability. <laughs> so whenever you find somebody that can move your game forward and we can do it as a team and we can do it as a family and I recognize that, boom, guess what? You get your ring. That's how you get your ring. But again, it goes back to making yourself look attractive. It goes back to how you package yourself. It goes back to how you display your image to the rest of the world. Again, like Jim Rohn said, attractive in order to get attractive people, you first have to make yourself attractive in all areas. And then portray yourself, you know, as as uh basically like a, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, you know, the higher end things. When, when you work on your image, then you set yourself up here to where you almost look unattainable. So when somebody gets you, it's like, boom, got him.
Man, I didn't think I was going to be able to get, because you set your image and your standard up so high versus you looking like everybody else. I always remember as dudes, we want to get something we don't think we can get. That's real. Whoever said that told the truth. We want stuff that's up here that we have to chase now, that we have to work for versus something everybody else could have gotten that walks around, says the same cliche stuff, has the same problem as girlfriend, number one, number two, number three, ain't no different. So whenever you work on your image and you make yourself attractive and you make yourself look like you're up here, it's a wrap. Because again, as a dude, you feel proud to attain that up there. I had to work for it. You know, but again, she supports me. She looks like and sounds like she would be a great teammate based upon the way she presented herself in terms of making herself attractive. And that's what you have to do in order to get everything you want. You have to present yourself as a zebra, looking different, uh, and also being so different that somebody has to lock you down and feel like they have to lock you down because again you are a rarity you might come around once every 10 15 20 30 years it's like Haley's comet i gotta get you because i realize that you're rare so that's how you do it that's that's how you position yourself to get what you want in every single day of your life by positioning yourself and and basically saying look I'm the best of the best. Not only do I talk it, but I walk it. And I look, I, I, I'm a certain standard of woman. That's what you have to present. I'm a certain standard of woman that you, as a dude, don't want to miss out on. Because I'm a once in a lifetime deal, baby. And that's how you do it. That's how you get what you want. So, it goes back to influence. So, I guess the message that, that I want to convey to you is... Work on your image. How do you work on your image? It starts with your Facebook stuff. Because again, everybody looks at your Facebook every single day. You know, you know I would tell y'all, you know, weeks and months ago, look at your page. You know, taking your feelings out of it. What, what does your page say about you? Does it, does it spell out amazing? Or does it say, I'm like everybody else. There's nothing special about me. There's no, I go to the same places everybody else goes to. I go to the same concerts. Look, if, if you ever want to impress a dude like me, say you're going to a seminar. Watch how that just blows somebody's mind. Just messes us up. You're going, well... To a seminar, because it says that basically when you say you're going to a seminar or something um, that that you're going to use to help you in life, it says that my learning is not over. I'm still getting better. I have not surrendered my life over to mediocrity. That's what that says. So that just whoosh, blows us back. Because again, most people go to concerts at this rate. You know, they'll go to their sorority stuff at this rate. They'll, you know, go to their church's convocation or something, you know, and that's pretty much it. But, you know, when you start doing extraordinary things that are not normal, then you pose and present yourself as exceptional. And it's mind blowing. And that's how you want to be. And that's how you want to present yourself. Start doing stuff like that. And, and start, you know, um, really, really being mindful of what you're putting out there on your page. And watch the type of, you know, the type of people you start attracting to your inbox. Or if you're on Instagram, your DM. Watch what I tell you. I know what I'm talking about. So really work on your image and really be aware of what your stuff is saying. So take your feelings out of it and be like, okay, if I were to scroll through my upload pictures, if I were to scroll through, you know, some of my posts, 
Does it say I'm energetic? Does it say I have a positive outlook on life? Does it say that I'm knowledgeable? Or does it say that I'm wrapped up in the things of current events? You know, what's going on with Kanye? What's, you know, the local, the, the, the next tragedy that pops up? You know, being mad at Trump. That's what everybody do. But when you can start having different conversations, then that's when you pose yourself as a different kind of woman and that's what attracts men not boys but men there's a difference boys men men take care men protect men actually listen boys just pop you a few times then just if i want you i want you if i don't if i see you, i see if i don't i don't whatever and it's done so that's what's up. So I had to drop that in on you, but uh, I know it was a lot. <laughs> I, don't, I dropped a lot on you, but rewatch it. I'm going to put this on my YouTube page so you can always reference this. But I'm telling you, this is how you get what you want. You know, a lot of y'all be struggling with men issues. I can't find the right man. Yeah, because you still doing girly stuff. You know, girl stuff you did 10, 15 years ago and wonder why you still keep attracting boys versus attracting Man, you see what I'm saying? There's a difference. There's a difference. So, I'm out. Love y'all. I have enjoyed this. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, be good. Love y'all. Have a great day. I'm gone.